out of that some controversy adam in terms of the mvp vote and a, a lot of uh, a lot of outrage here today which rightfully so i think that it reveals a little bit of a an, kind of a fundamental process issue with mvp voting in general as MVP voter Hub Arkush had revealed that Aaron Rodgers, despite him being the most valuable player on the field to his team, he's not getting an MVP vote from him because he's a jerk and that he is selfish for what he did to his team this year. I think this opens up a whole variety of conversations, but it reveals, I think, a flawed process that we see right now with Coach of the Year voting, MVP, and even all pros. I mean, what are your thoughts on this as somebody who's in the national media spotlight constantly? Well, first of all, if someone's not going to take uh, the process seriously, if someone's going to – have, be petty about his vote, feel free to give it to us. We will gladly yes. take the AP MVP vote. Uh, it doesn't have to be me. It could be Dalton. It could be any number of people at our company who I know for certain would put more discretion and remove passions and go in with a sober, clear-eyed view of the NFL. You could have arguments, and, I, and I've made the argument that maybe Aaron Rodgers isn't the MVP. Maybe, perhaps, it's Joe Burrow because Joe Burrow has met – as much to his team and the reversal of fortunes of that franchise as any player in the National Football League. But to say it's not because of his performance, it's because he's a jerk or because he wasn't available all 16 games because he caught COVID. Look, we we have and we can, again, if you'd like, get into the weeds of the vaccine, no vaccine de debate. But there are tons of players now that are missing the game missing games because they're popping positive. And, oh, guess what? They've had both shots. So the idea that you miss a game because of catching COVID should be disqualifying um, for uh, uh, for the MVP award is just ludicrous, absolutely ludicrous. I think, Cody, if you take a step back and maybe look at some of the motivations, I, you did a little digging, right? What is this guy's background? Well, you know, he does some sideline reporting. It works for, obviously, I believe it's Odyssey, one of the Odyssey networks, and he covers a lot of Chicago-based sports. So, mm. I mean, if you if 2 plus 2 equals 4 here, we're obviously connecting the dots here. And and, and I get it. And his cover photo obviously includes Aaron Jones. But outside of that, I think it, it sets a very dangerous precedent, right? Because how often, Adam, do we go every single year discussing, debating amongst ourselves about which player could be MVP, Offensive Player of the Year, Coach of the Year, and even all pro nominations that we see, hey, you know, maybe this guy deserved it more than this guy. We always have these arguments here, but now with something like this coming out and obviously a public, you know, statement here by Arkush, I think it really raises some concerns about the validity of voters. And I think it's a process right now that many people, especially in the public eye, this is something that creates a lot of distrust from people that love the game, that love the players that, you know, maybe really truly do believe Rodgers is the MVP. I, I think that we can make a multitude of arguments for Rodgers, Jonathan Taylor being one of those guys. I mean, you can go back and forth. Like you mentioned, even Joe Burrow. We talk about value. Most valuable player on the field to their team. You take a guy like Aaron Rodgers off, we see how different they look without him. I mean, it's it's no question there. But in, in your eyes, does this maybe, this incident right here, do you think it may force the NFL's hand or even just the voting process to change in the future? Well, I think it should be more democratic. I think certainly the Pro Football Hall of Fame is too cozy, too clubby of a group. They're far... I, I think there are only a few dozen voters for that as well. Uh, and so when there are only 40, 50, 60, whatever voters for these hugely important honors, not just, you know, the prestige of being an NFL MVP, but there are plenty of players who have incentives wrapped up into uh, winning awards. And if you have the people deciding the award, doing so in bad faith, yes, I completely agree. It should be more uh, democratized. I think that instead of 50 voters, there should be 500 voters. Look, when these rules were made, there are a very, very select few amount of people who had the power and the platform to have that kind of voice. Now, we're everywhere. Like, we're one of how many, you know, a half dozen, maybe a dozen websites that cover just football or football and sports. And there are all kinds of outlets out there, radio stations, podcasts, obviously legacy media like print and, and, and TV and radio. Uh, why do just 50 people get to decide who the MVP is? I, I think baseball does it right. Um, they have a huge, huge pool of people that decide the Hall of Fame. Now, granted, the, 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 AP can, the AP and the Pro Football Hall of Fame have nothing in common. They're run by two totally different outfits. But I'm just saying generally, when you're deciding these awards, what makes sideline reporter for Odyssey uh, any more of an expert on on the NFL than, than you or me who live, eat, treat, drink, sleep it in every single day. Yeah. Um, and of course there's some bias involved here. We all have biases. We all have issues that, you know, 
I don't like this guy. So I'm not, if it's, if, if it's a tie, I'm going to go to the other dude. That's why you broaden the base. That's why you get a huge, huge number of voters. Uh, it will eliminate the variance of a handful of people keeping someone out. Like we talked, I think earlier this week, T.O. Terrell Owens yeah. uh, was not a first ballot hall of famer because of his behavior. At least the people that, and, and they did it because of his, you know, locker room torching antics, uh, at least the people that voted against him were Hall of Famers themselves. They're, you know, they, these were ex-players who did not, from my understanding, is they got up on the table and said, no, you cannot let this guy in, particularly in the first ballot, because of what he means, what, what this honor means and what it would say about him and us if we let him in. This guy in Chicago doesn't have those kind of credentials. So, yeah, I, I think to a, a long answer to a short question is this. The more people that can vote, the better. Uh, that way you'll get rid of some of the, you know, the, these strange instances where clearly Aaron Rodgers is the best player in football this year. He has an incredible touchdown interception rate. The Packers are 13 and two with him, 0 and one without him. I don't think there's any other way you can spin it that he's the most valuable player. And to say, because the dude's a jerk, he says, I own you Chicago. I'm sure that was probably <laughs> the straw that broke the camel's back. <laughs> Um, and you know, the, 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 the fig leaf of, oh, he was, wasn't vaccinated. Certainly that didn't help the Packers, but you know what? They're going to play the exact same teams in the playoffs. They would have won, would have played even if they had won that game. They're the one seed. Now they would have won that game. They would have been a one seed. Then there was zero impact on their season by him missing that game. And, and real quick, I want to give a special shout out to uh, Steve the Champ, a new follower here on Twitch.tv slash Pro Football Network. Thank you for your host and thank you for your follow here at Twitch.tv slash Pro Football Network. Your support means a lot to both Adam, myself, and all of us here at Pro Football Network. I, I think you make valid points there too, Adam. Look, I, I think for me, I'm kind of on the same precipice of saying Aaron Rodgers, if, if it were my vote, I would give him the MVP award simply because his on-field product has been incredible. And I think that also factoring in here with one game remaining on the season i would definitely be keeping an eye on jonathan taylor i mean my vote is not solidified just yet but if i had to do it today it would be to aaron Rodgers, and i think his impact on the field like you mentioned it speaks for itself we saw how that green bay offense looked with jordan love against a very bad kansas city chiefs defense at the time i would be very intrigued to see aaron Rodgers versus the chiefs now you know he's been he's been playing really good football we might we might in about five weeks <laughs> 